All right, Vikings fans, let's continue our look around the NFC North today. It's the Detroit Lions, and on the line, on the Lions, is from DetroitLions.com, Tori Petri, someone who's been around the business for a long time. Not many people know the Lions better than Tori, so we bring her in on the line right now to talk about her team. Hi, Tori. How are you? I'm great, Wabi. You've always been great at weighing in on the Vikings over here on DetroitLions.com, so I'm happy to return the favor. Well, we're glad you are. This is season number what for you with the Lions? This is season number six. Okay, way to go. Yeah, um, fun, fun ride. It has, been, it has been a good ride for you, and of late it's included um, a head coach that you've gotten to know over the last couple of seasons, um, some changes in the front office, but you got Matt Patricia running the show. He's got a season under his belt, and he's going around the block here for the second time. What do you think about Coach Patricia? Yeah, I think that that is probably the key thing going into this 2019 season is that it is Matt Patricia's second year here. And everything around the building seems to feel just a bit more settled this time this year as compared to this time last year. Uh, Matt Patricia was really just getting his bearings last year. He was inheriting a team of players that weren't all quite tailored to his system. Uh, But now he's got a year of Bob Quinn working on getting guys for the system that fit exactly what he wants to have and the kind of players that he wants to play. So he has a little bit more tools in his toolbox that fit uh, what Matt Patricia wants to do as a head coach and the building and the personnel and the players and everybody here is more used to what he wants to do. So there's just a level level of comfortability that comes with this second year under Matt Patricia that there maybe wasn't so much as last year when uh, they were really just starting to figure things out and Matt Patricia was experiencing his very first season as a head coach in the league. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something that's that's important, Tori, and that's, um, you know, tailor-made players to a scheme. And that's just so important in this league. It's a matchup league. It's a scheme and a coaching league. And you need players who fit what you're going to try to do uh, schematically. And in free agency, that's always a big wild card. Uh, for the you know typically that's a big wild card because you're getting guys who you didn't draft and you're going to plug them into your system and you're going to hope they fit but that that's the one thing though with the big free agent signing that you guys had Trey Flowers Matt Patricia knows Trey from his time with the Patriots I don't think you're really worried about whether he's a scheme fit or not I think we're pretty certain that Trey Flowers is a (laughs) scheme fit so how has he looked so far Yeah, I think that is a pretty safe call. And I think another big part of it, too, is culture fit. Uh, Now, we haven't really gotten to see Trey Flowers out on the field too much. He has been limited in OTAs and mini camps this summer. So we're hoping to see a little bit more action from him once training camp comes around. Uh, But I think that the culture that he brings is a big part of why the Lions wanted to bring him in here as well because Matt Patricia just has a certain culture that he wants to run. It's why you see him sign guys like Danny Amendola and Mm -hmm. it's also why those guys want to come here and play for Matt Patricia because they like how he operates. They like the program that he runs. They like his personality. They mesh. And when you have that chemistry going, it makes for a better product on the football field. And so looking for that culture fit as well as that scheme fit, particularly on defense with the scheme fit because of how Matt Patricia likes to move pieces around and have versatile multi-position type of guys, especially uh, along the defensive line and, and with the linebacker. He likes to have some of those guys be interchangeable. So that's the kind of player that he is looking for. And with Trey Flowers, he just fits uh, right into that defensive line and can kind of do a little bit of everything in terms of an all-around defender and just can make your defense better uh, from every aspect. Yeah, Lions are putting a lot of uh, really good players in place on defense. And um you know, it, and it's not just Trey Flowers. It's guys you've already had in place, and it's some new players. So I think that defense is coming along nicely. And, of course, Matt Patricia, yeah. we, we know he knows what he's doing from his time with Bill Belichick and the Patriots. Now, on offense, Tori, I was, um, when, when I lined this up with you to do this, I was really excited to ask you about this next person. And I don't know if you can predict who it's going to be or not. But the reason I'm excited to ask you about this person is because I know him, and I know him well, and I have a lot of respect for him. Oh. Any idea who it is? I don't know. Hit me with it. Daryl Bevel, your new offensive uh, coordinator. Yes. He was with yes, here. That yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, of he was here with the Vikings. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, Daryl, 
Daryl came here with Brad Childress in 06 and was the offensive coordinator through, you know, I believe the 2010 season. And I always had so much respect for him because of the way he could work with a young quarterback that he was trying to develop like Tavares Jackson or with a veteran quarterback who he had a good relationship with like Brett Favre. You know, and we'd have mics on guys on the sideline, and there'd be stuff we couldn't ever use on the website, but you could you could listen to it. And, and the way Daryl Bevel could talk to these players, the way he would recall things they did back in 1997 against this look against that team in Week 3, I was so impressed with his knowledge of the game. What do you foresee um, happening to this offense with Daryl uh, Bevel and his guidance? I think that the goal with Daryl Bevel, and we've heard this – catchphrase word all off season is balance. They really want to be more balanced at running the football and opening up the passing game with the way that you run the football. It doesn't mean that they're going to be a run only offense or that they're just going to ground it, pound it the whole time. It means that they want their run game to be so productive that it makes teams bite and open up the passing game. Uh, so that is the goal with Daryl Bevel. I think that we're going to see a lot more use of tight ends in this offense as well. It was a position that was so weak for the Lions last year. They really didn't have much going on at tight end at all last year. And this year they have brought in so many guys at the tight end position that it's clear that that is a position that they want to utilize this year. When you draft a tight end in the first round of the NFL draft with TJ Hawkinson, you're going to want to use him uh, this year. And then you bring in a free agent, Jesse James. So tight end is a position that I think we're going to see a lot of in this off- offense. Maybe some two tight end sets. And I think that they're really going to rely on on Johnson heavily this year and his abilities in the run game. We've seen them switch up a little bit of uh, position uh, positions along the offensive line here in the spring training program with uh, Frank Ragnow playing at center rather than at left guard and uh, just a couple of other positions uh, that they're mixing up and trying out different combinations along the line because they want to have the best line that they can so that they can run the football really well and then protect long enough for Matthew Stafford to get some of those deep shots in there that they open up for. Uh, so I think that those things are going to be the emphasis when it comes to what Daryl Bevel wants to do here in Detroit. Yeah. Last thing, Tori, and I, uh, I'd be remiss not to ask you about this because where we are sitting right now recording this chat with you is Egan, Minnesota. That's where TCO Performance Center is located. That's the home of Detroit Lions running back uh, special teams Zach guy, Zach Zenner. So how's my man Zach Zenner doing? Mm-hmm. Zach Center is definitely a guy that Lions fans love. Ever since he came here and uh, burst onto the scene, uh, his first preseason, Lions fans have loved him. Of course, the Lions uh, re-signed him this offseason, so it's certain that they want him to be a part of what they're doing at the running back position. He certainly has an opportunity to step up this year. Of course, Kerryon Johnson is kind of going to be uh, their go-to guy, but Kerryon and Zach are, are different kinds of running backs, so... I definitely think that uh, Zach Zenner has a role in this offense, and it'll be interesting to see how he does this year because he really had a great finish to 2018. Yeah, at Sports Tory on Twitter is where you can find Tory Petri. Um, I know you guys are working on some projects here in the uh, the five week break period that you're going to unveil uh, on of your website. Course. We're doing the same Football thing. Never That's right, it never does. We got to keep pumping out that content, right? <laughs> We do, we do. All right. Well, uh, we'll see you this fall at uh, at a couple of football games, but until then, enjoy your downtime. Good luck at training camp. Good luck in 2019, and we'll see you somewhere down the road. Wabi, thanks so much. Good luck to you guys as well. Thanks, Tori. See ya.